everyone, this is Kai Shan from Liberty Melbourne. Um, thank you for joining me for this tea workshop. And it is also my first online tea workshop. Um, I've done my best to set this up in a very short time because it's a last minute uh, decision to present this workshop on Nomad um, Tea Festival. And uh, I'd like to thank them for giving me this opportunity to share this tea practice on my uh, with you. And I uh, also would like to apologize for the lighting because uh, night time is the only time that I can find to film this um, tea workshop without a 5 PSO running in and out of the camera. So, um, without further ado, I'd like to start the tea workshop uh, and firstly give you some background of uh, brew brewing tea with a bowl. Um, so, in my opinion, brewing tea in a bowl, uh, you can say it is the oldest uh, tea brewing method exists in human history. Because um, the legend where Shen Long Shi had discovered uh, tea as a beverage uh, was when he um, was sitting underneath a tea tree and, uh, and you know, uh, boiling some water in a pot and then a few leaves had fell into his pot and uh, he, he drank the the liquid and have found that oh you know these leaves um, actually um, had some um, you know uh, medical properties such as um, detoxing uh, to uh, cure minor uh, food poisoning for example um, back in the day and uh, I would also like to add in some interesting knowledge of Sir Long Shi because from a long period of time including people who uh, born and grow up in China, we all thought that Shen Long Shi is one person, uh, and he was the you know the the empire and a god uh, in our legend. But actually, um, Shi means you know a tribe. Um, so Shen Long Shi is a tribe that is called Shen Long. So it's not just one person who had found um, tea. It's actually um, the legend was that uh, Shen Long Shi Ri Chang Bai Chao means um, this tribe of people actually tasted uh, 100 herbs per day to, um, you know, um, gave a very good foundation for Chinese medicine and also agriculture. So uh, that actually makes it more um, you know realistic because you know one person cannot try 100 herb and discover its property you know uh, in one day but a tribe of people can actually do that um, and then another background that I would like to uh, add is that brewing tea in a bowl is um, actually very popular in Song and Tang dynasty um, it is after the 12th century that uh, pe you know brewing with a teapot started to become more popular. Pot started to become more popular, uh, popular. Sorry, and because uh, it was advised by the empire at the time that you know uh, brewing tea, um, the old method, which is um, a matcha kind of brewing, you know, involves too many process and too many equipments and only um, people, you know, the higher class people can enjoy tea that way. So he banned it, um, the tea practice. Um, you can also find it in current practice where the tea farmer uh, will simply take a bowl and that may be a soup spoon to the tea film to test out, you know, the quality of the tea. Uh, we're going to switch the camera around and I'd like to show you what sort of equipment I use. Okay, as you can see that brewing tea with a bowl involves firstly a bowl. 
Uh, can be any bowl really of any size. Uh, of course, if you're sharing with more people, then you probably want it to be a little bit bigger. Uh, today we will be using a wider rim clay bowl. Uh, this is a bowl I bought from Made in Japan. Um, very pretty um, with the white color and um, it's really good for you know um, looking at the color um, of the tea. Uh, so good for tea appreciation seeing the leaf to unfold and uh, also it's good for uh, tea such as um, green tea, tea doesn't need a uh, very high sort of um, temperature because it's right rim so it cools down uh, quickly you can also use um, a taller more narrow um, sort of bowl um, in winter for uh, tea that needs a higher temperature um, Another thing, if you really can't find a bowl that you like, you can also use your guy one, for example. But uh, that would be, um, you know, uh, the volume of tea would be a little bit less. So today I've pulled out one of my guy one uh, here for uh, one of the demonstration. Uh, if time and out, I would like to brew three different sort of tea because uh, it requires a uh, different sort of technique. So the second thing that you will need is a um, teaspoon, not sorry, tea, not teaspoon, soup spoon, like an Asian soup spoon. Um, I have two different sizes here because um, you need to adjust your uh, soup spoon um, to, you know, um, according to the tea bowl that you're using. Uh, sometimes that if you can, um, you know, if you like to set up your tea session, uh, according to the style that you need you might want to change the color the texture as well uh, sometimes a small pair of chopsticks will also help um, but um, it's not necessary and uh, lastly just as normal tea brewing um, you might like to set up a fairness cup and some tea cups um, for sharing with your friends now I'll flip the camera back around Now the water is boiled, um, we will start to demonstrate our first bowl brewing technique, which is a uh, word in Chinese called Shang Tou Fa. Pretty much just means that you place the tea leaves on the top. Um, the first tea that we like to um, you know, brew with a bowl is this green tea here. It is a jasmine green, not my favorite tea, uh, but it's really enjoyable in summertime. Uh, so um, the first demonstration is perfect for summer uh, if you have a really um, tender uh, green tea um, green tea that with a lot of tea buds um, so tea that require temperature that is lower 80 degree um, you would like to um, use this method so that's why we choose a bowl that is really wide ring Sometimes you can also use a um, tea bowl that is uh, made with glass because um, visually it's um, more pretty in summer and more cooling. So uh, let's start. So depending if you are sharing with um, cust uh, not customers, <laughs> in my case customers, sometimes at my tea shop, but um, guests, then you can adjust you know, the amount of water you place in the bowl. And then uh, we will drop the leaf in after you um, put the water in. And that's why a pair of chopsticks sometimes is handy because um, if the leaf uh, wasn't placed evenly, you can uh, still manipulate it with a pair of chopsticks. Uh, and out of excitement, I drop all the leaves in, you know, in one go. But uh, normally, 
um, you know, with the tea teachers that I follow. Uh, her advice is you drop the leaf scene in three goes. Then you can, you know, uh, place the tea leaf more evenly on the surface. And when I'm brewing by myself, um, after the tea has been placed into the bowl, there will be around 30 to 40 seconds where you can absorb the leaf, um, just trying to draw the water into the leaves itself and it will slowly unfold. Uh, this is the perfect time to, if it's in your practice, do a very, very short meditation. So um, normally I'll place my hands um, around the bowl and um, just trying to appreciate the fragrance of the tea and also to absorb the tea leaves that's slowly dancing um, in the hot water and then eventually when it's almost ready about 70% of the leaves have drawn in enough water then you can start um, using the soup spoons to distribute the tea into the teacups Now I wish I had two cameras so you can see what I'm uh, doing because um, uh, the tea leaves have slowly started to drop in at to the bottom. Maybe I'll do another shot over here so you can see what's happening. Now I'm distributing the tea liquid. And the distributions of the tea liquid uh, we will follow something that is very similar to uh, Japanese tea ceremony where um, you actually um, would not go one, two, three, one, two, three because if you distribute your tea that way then the strength of the tea liquid would be very uneven so what we are actually doing is one, two, three, and then three, two, one, and then and so on and so on. So the cups that you finish with for the next round, you will start with that cup first and then go to the next and then the next. There's still a little bit of tea left in the bowl. We will then tip it inside the fairness cup. And if you like, you can, you know, do a second brew. And to cool down the temperature, we normally use a teaspoon. Sorry, keep saying teaspoon, soup spoon. So the hot water will travel to the surface of the spoon first and then uh, subsequently cool down the water and then go into the tea bowl. So that's our first brew uh, for green tea. Cheers! Mm, sweet! Now with the camera bringing closer to me, um, I'd like to show you a second technique of uh, bowl brewing and uh, this method is good for brewing tea that um, requires temperature around 80-85 degrees, maybe even 90. 
So for example, the black tea we are brewing tonight uh, is very nice around the temperature of 90 degrees. Uh, it is a charcoal roasted black tea. Um, and because it's charcoal roasted with a low temperature uh, for a longer period of time, a lot of the caffeine actually being extracted. So um, this tea is very sweet and good for uh, nighttime sessions such as tonight. And other tea you can um, try with uh, this brewing technique is Oriental Beauty. Um, so um, let's start. So firstly, we will place the water, uh, fill the water up to one third of the volume. Then we will fill in more water. You can use the water to go in a circle. That way you can, um, that will help lower the temperature of the water as well going into the bowl. When I'm brewing tea, um, you know, to be enjoyed on my own, I like to use a smaller bowl because in that way I will be able to use less tea as well. Uh, another thing that you can do when you're drinking alone is you can drink the tea you know directly from this tea bowl because you know when the tea is ready the leaves should be sunk you know um, to the bottom one of the questions that you might ask is uh, how much leaves do you use you know in a bowl brewing session I, I would suggest half but of course um, you know there's no rules in how to do this it's all about preference and what suits you best now the tea is ready um, Since we have the camera so close to us, um, I'd like to also show you how to um, hold onto your bowl uh, when you are pulling the tea into the fairness cup. So with a smaller bowl such as this, I like to grab it like this with your three fingers and you can see that I'm only holding the bowl um, on the top so uh, it's harder to you know, burn my hand. Just like handling a guy one, really. But um, with a bigger bowl such as this, um, it is really too heavy for me to do a 90 degree tilting without dropping it. So I will uh, hold it such as this. Also only on the top of the ring and in that way. I can, you know, till it with confidence that I won't be breaking anything. Now, I'd like to also show you how to do the second brew. So with a teaspoon, allow the water to drop into your teaspoon first before going into your bowl. Then that way, um, the temperature of the water can be uh, lower. Now, let me try this tea. Again, very sweet. Now, for our last brew tonight uh, is a Taiwanese oolong uh, from Mount Ali, Ali Shan. Uh, 
it is a medium roasted um, oolong and as you know oolong require higher temperature um, to really uh, fully extract all the nice fragrance and flavor uh, out of the tea and that's why uh, we'll be using what we call xia tofa for this uh, brewing technique xia means bottom and um, it is um, you know literally to uh, try to place the tea at the bottom of your tea bowl uh, unlike the first and the second brewing technique um, and because this is a tea that requires higher temperature, we will also do something that we didn't do uh, for the first and the second brew, which is uh, warming up your bowl and your equipment before you start brewing. So let's start. tea demonstration we will also use this time to um, appreciate the dry leaves before we place the tea in have a smell I can smell very strong um, seaweed uh, sort of note um, you know the nori that used to wrap the sushi around one is dry roasted that's the sort of smell that it reminds me of um, And then we will place it inside the tea bowl. We won't be drawing a circle because we want the full Um, we want the highest temperature possible and as the leaves starting to unfold we can start um, tipping the water into the waste water bowl Now for oolong, I like to again uh, wait about 40 seconds for our first infusion even um, we are doing bowl brewing um, that's the brewing time that I tend to follow and uh, going back to um, the start of the video when I said that when you were waiting for the leaves to be unfold it is a perfect time to do a uh, quick meditation if it's in your practice um, it's really um, you know a uh, good routine for me as I have find it very hard to fit meditation into my uh, lifestyle and tea is something that I drink and I um, make if it's not once a day twice a day and I normally after you know looking into the bowl it really recharge me in a way so I really um, recommend you to try it even though you had done no meditation before now we're going to distribute the tea into the teacup smell the caramelized sugar um, in the leaves and the liquid it really smells very nice uh, allow me to try it first before I keep talking mm. it is my favorite um, one of uh, my favorite tea um, you know to drink on a daily basis
and pulling it this way um, it allows a different experience and it tastes slightly different um, than pulling in the teapot as well I'd like to end our workshop with a short summary about what we had covered tonight which is the three different techniques that we use to uh, brew tea in a bowl and then the three techniques are all about manipulating temperature according to the type of teas that you brew so the first one is a shang tofa so again shang means you know um, top and then zhong tofa and xia tofa shang zhong xia top middle and bottom so you place your tea um, on the top when your uh, tea requires temperature that is below 80 degrees and then uh, you place your tea in the middle when you uh, want to brew a tea that is about 80 to 90 degrees um, and then you place your tea at the bottom and then you also will warm your tea with if you would like to brew a tea that is uh, about 90 degrees. So for example, an oolong that we have demonstrated tonight. I, however, do not recommend you to use bowl brewing uh, for a pour. As you know, pour has a lot of substance that can be uh, extracted from the leaves. Um, having a lower temperature does downplay the flavor and the fragrance a little bit. Although there's no strict rules, if that is what you have, and you would like to have a go, please do so. And um, I would also like to um, again apologize because um, this is being my first online workshop, I had a lot of technical issue where I forgot to press the button, I forgot to turn on the mic. So you might see a lot of scene changing or you know the sound quality not being the same. Uh, I'm very frustrated and very very tired because I did some of the takes you know a numbers of times but haven't actually been stored in the phone anyway uh, I yeah but that is my issues not yours and um, I hope you had enjoyed this tea shop I mean uh, this workshop so tired sorry um, and if you have any questions, um, please feel free to uh, contact me through social medias. Um, you can go on to um, Instagram, for example, to um, uh, message me. Our Instagram account is uh, liberty underscore Melbourne. Uh, I will place some pets here. <laughs> if my editing skill is good, it should be up here on the screen here. And uh, I will um, please also feel free to email us. Um, my email is libertyth at gmail.com. And then you can also uh, find our homepage, uh, liberty.com.au, to uh, find some of the tea that we use tonight for the workshop. So, again, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you had enjoyed the workshop, and uh, hopefully, I'll be filming more. Um, workshop and talk to you more about tea which is my passion um, and uh, I see you somewhere else and uh, some other time and bye